You know, we often hear testimonies from people who didn't know the Lord, and then they got saved, and their lives changed, and as the old saying goes, they lived happily ever after. But these testimonies that you just heard are from two very close friends of mine who were already saved, and then they fell away to such a degree that they didn't think that God would ever take them back again. They didn't think God could salvage the wreckage of their lives, but yet somehow God was able to take their mess and turn it into a miracle of his amazing grace and mercy. Remember the story of the prodigal in the Bible that, that Nathan just talked about? Notice it's not called the story of the prodigal stranger. It's called the story of the prodigal son. It was the prodigal son that was sitting in the pigsty wondering if his father would ever take him back again. It was the prodigal son that wondered if there was any hope for his life. And it was the prodigal son that the father ran to with open arms welcoming him home. I love what it says in Revelation 13, verse 8, where it describes Jesus as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Think for just a moment what this actually means. It means that this whole plan of salvation that we know about was not God's plan B. It was planned from the very beginning. God was not taken off guard when man fell in the Garden of Eden. He already knew that it was going to happen. He had already made provision for it, and he had already set in motion a plan that would culminate with the cross. When Adam and Eve partook of that forbidden fruit, which was arguably the most epic failure in history, God wasn't surprised. In fact, their failure had already been factored into his plan, and provision had already been made for their redemption. So my friend, if you have failed, be encouraged by this thought. Before God called you, before you were saved, in fact, before you were even born, God knew exactly how your life would play out. Before you'd even made one mistake, God took all your future failures into account. And in his infinite wisdom and love, he preempted your blunders with a plan to turn your tragedy into a triumph in the end. My friend, with this knowledge, you can be confident that if you are still breathing right now, it's not too late for God to intervene and restore what the locusts and the canker worm have eaten. Amen. Now, having said these things, it's important for me to, to make clear that disobedience is not a trivial matter, and I am not trying to trivialize it. God's grace does not guarantee that we'll never have to live with the negative consequences of our actions. In fact, many times, even though God forgives and restores, there are still scars that remain from disobedience. And often the process of correcting our mistakes can be a long and painful one, at least longer than it would have been had we obeyed. For example, you know the story of Jonah. He was called to go to Nineveh. The best way would have obviously been by ship, but because he disobeyed, he chose the hard way instead. And although he did ultimately make it to Nineveh, by the time he arrived, he, he arrived, he had been through a storm, he'd been thrown off a ship, he'd been swallowed by a fish, he spent three days inside the fish, and then was vomited out on the beach. Yeah, Jonah made it to Nineveh all right, but the first option would have definitely been a better one. So my friend, this is a serious matter that we're talking about here. 